We've got a golden opportunity now to get in the face of these guys and to say, no, bugger off, we don't want it. Hi everybody and welcome to another nature chat and yes today we are talking about the pillager. Um, I'm really really excited today to have Al Lawless, our New South uh, Newcastle campaign manager. Hi. And we have special guest your mum Penny from the, actually from the Pillager region. Hello, how are you? Hello Michaela. Hi Michaela. Hi everyone. Great to have you here. So Basically, Al, you know, we've seen a little bit of a clip of Pelaga Rising, which is, you know, a movie that we've actually made that really demonstrate the community coming together to really protect the Pelaga. Can you give us a little bit of background on this campaign? Yeah, of course. So this is a really long running campaign. It's been going for close to a decade um, and there have been many campaigners involved and many people across the Northwest region and actually the whole of Australia. Um, so really top line is that um, Santos is proposing to drill 850 coal seam gas wells in the Pilliga forest and the surrounding farmland. And this would um, greatly impact the Great Artesian Basin to recharge zone for the Great Artesian Basin, impact the groundwater, the wildlife that um, depend on the Pilliga for survival, as well as the um, beautiful wildflowers and trees and all the rest of the nature. Um, but also the livelihoods of all of the um, the farmers in the region, the future of, of their um, their life on on the farm, um, yeah. through the food producing area. Um, but most importantly, it's the sacred land of the Gamilaroi peoples, and um, drilling um, into the Pilago is going to greatly impact their living culture. Um, and their connection to country. Yeah, and I was just I'm just getting into this some of this campaign. Like this has been going on f for a very long time with many campaigners from the Wilderness Society contributing to this, and many many different people from across the region in the community as well. Yeah, so um, it's actually quite a beautiful example of people from all walks of life coming together on a shared issue and coming together for different reasons. Um, so as we know, gas is a dirty polluting fossil fuel. So a lot of people have come to this campaign because they're concerned about um, the impacts to the climate crisis. Um, but other people have come because they're concerned about impacts to groundwater or to their farms or to their town. Um, so it's really brought people together. But 97% um, of the local community have said no to CSG in ongoing community surveys and also um, as well as the Gamilaroi people. So 0% of native title agreements have been signed um, despite years of negotiations. So it's a, it's a really hot um, pressure issue um, that's just continued to be um, covered in controversy. Yeah, so we've we've seen a lot of people. We're just seeing images right now of of just a selection of those that are have said no to CSG for the children's future because of you know their worries about over fossil fuel and, and what it's going to mean to a, to a local indigenous and and their culture. Um, you know what I know both of you really have a strong connection to the Pilliga Penny. Um, can you give us a little bit of your background and your connection to the Pilliga and your campaign? Yes, Michaela, I actually grew up in the area. I grew up between Narrabri and Moree on a property up there was cattle and wheat property. It's a very big food producing area, a lot of big agricultural area, and it employs a lot of people in the area. It's very important. Um, and most farmers and graziers up there have dams and things, but they rely heavily on that underground water, especially the further west you go, mm. if, if they lose that artesian water from the artesian basin or it's polluted, they their livelihood is devastated. And your grandfather particularly had quite a connection too. Yes, my grandfather had a property out in the Pilliga, which is south of Narrabri. Um, and actually my cousin still has the property. So uh, we, even though I didn't grow up particularly in the Pilliga, uh, we spent a lot of time there mm. as children. And as my children grew up, I made sure that I took them to the Pilliga to show them 
what was there and the beauty of it from Yarry Lake through down towards Baradine and to the sculptures, to the salt caves and all through the area with the bird life and the, the animals and the plants. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant! I look, everyone. I I just would like to to share shout, shout out to everyone who is actually watching us right now from wherever you are, whether you're local to the Pilago or whether you're across the country. Please, in the comments below, let us know where you're watching from. And if you have any questions for Penny or Al about this particular area, which is really really special, um, please let us know, and I'll pass them on. Now, Al, you obviously got to spend quite a bit of time as a as a young kid out in the Pilago. You want to share a little bit about that? Yeah, thanks, Michaela. Um, as mum was saying, um, she really made an effort um, when we were kids to make sure we spent lots of time in the natural world, um, but most importantly out in the northwest region because that really is her home and I also feel a really deep connection um, to that area, to that land. Um, so, yeah, we used to go bushwalking and bird watching. I still really enjoy bird watching. Out in the Pilaga, there's a really beautiful bird called the Rainbow Bee Eater. That's quite stunning. Wow. Um, that's, yeah, really beautiful. But the Pilaga itself, it's just really full of life and richness and wonder. And I think for me as a small child growing up, I really saw that um, deep, like, biodiversity in this forest. And it really drew me to, um, to be working for nature protection, which is what I do now. Um, yeah, I had the the great honour of, of spending lots of time outside. So my grandma still lives in Narrabri and every school holidays used to go up to see her and, yeah, just really be part of, of that country. Yeah. Um, really fortunate to have a mum who cares so much about the natural world and plants and could teach me all about that. Oh, that's so cool. And, like, there's some we've got some questions coming in. We have one here from Maureen Smith who actually is asking uh, what are some of the really special animals and birds that live in the Pilliga? Um you know, and that is such a great question. And, and one of the things that I've, put, having worked on the Pilego campaign with you a little bit, I in particular um, is pretty keen about some of the frogs that you have out there, which I don't think most people really think out to a kind of more of a deserty type uh, and, um, you know, uh, forest type air situation think of our th frogs. But this crucifix frog, um, which is really, really interesting that you guys can see on screen now, these um, brightly, brightly coloured animals actually remain buried for many months and even years um, underneath the soil. And it's not until when the rain actually comes down do they come up. And this, this photo was taken a few years ago after a really heavy rain. But the really cool thing about this, you know, really brightly coloured frog is... Um, it's acting as a bit of a warning against predation because, uh, you know, if you've got to be careful if you're actually even touching these things because um, a few scientists have actually recorded painful stinging and headaches because some of the some of the um, uh, kind of venom type stuff that they emit is uh, actually makes you kind of a bit wary of it. So I mean that's such a cool animal. I think it's amazing. And you've also got particularly the pilaga mouse there as well, mm -hmm. or the pulku. I think it said. I'm not. I'm not sure about the, the actual pronunciation of that. But that particular mouse is only found in the pilaga and some of the, the surrounding places around there. So I just think when it comes to animals, you know, there is so many cool animals and really amazing um, uh, nature out there. And I know you yourself, Penny, you're a botanist as well. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, some of the plants that we might see out in the Pilaga? Well, it's it's quite a mixed area, surprisingly. There is a lot of uh, colitis, which is most people call it white pine and, and black pine. Um, there's box, so the eucalypts. Uh, the iron bark trees and a whole mixture it, and, and very dense understory and it varies from area to area within the Pilago. It's, it's not a homogenous area. Um, there's also a lot of casuarinas in different places which the black cockatoos love mm. of course um, and many wildflowers, just beautiful wildflowers out there. Yeah, I'm it showing some of those on screen now. In places too, so it it's great area for birds, especially they love it with the dense cover. Yeah, it's one of those that places that I think just at certain times of year they just really pop. You know, <laughs> you you don't expect it until you go out there and see it. So um, 
want I just want to give a couple of shout outs to people who are who are watching us today. We've got Nadi Guy in uh, I think Pottsville, Northern New South Wales. Hi, thank you for joining us. We really do appreciate it. Uh, we have uh, Gazil Drea from looks like Northern Beaches in Sydney. Thank you for watching. We really hope you're enjoying this chat. Um, and Mary Heath from Adelaide as well. So we do have a few people from all around the country. Um, so coming into what exactly is happening, um, can Al, can you tell us the latest um, update in this campaign? Yeah, thanks, Michaela. So it really is crunch time to protect the pillar from coal seam gas. And we've been waiting for this moment for, as I said, close to a decade. So on Friday, just last Friday, um, the New South Wales Department of Planning uh, referred the project, so it's technically called the Narrabri Gas Project, um, to the Independent Planning Commission for review. Now, I know that sounds like a little bit of complicated regulatory process, um, but really it just means that um, final approvals um, for Santos to plunder these 850 coal seam gas wells into the forest um, are going to be are set to be approved or denied. So this really is the moment. And so the Independent Planning Commission in reviewing the project are calling for public submissions um, from the public, from nationwide. And so it's really important um, that we stand up and speak out against the project. Um, and they're also holding public hearings um, over five days at the end of July. And submissions close the 31st of July. So this yeah. really is the time. Yeah, and making your submission, it, it doesn't necessarily has to be a, a big, big thing. Like we've got mm -hmm. links down below in the comments um, where you can click through and see how easy it is to do in terms of what how we've got it set up. Really just click through and have a look. That'd be great. Um, but what are the things, like we've seen a little bit about how the, the animals and the, and the, and the, unique um, not only wildlife but uh, flora as well but also how many different people from across the region have come together we're talking farmers we're talking local community we're talking indigenous um what is really at risk here yeah thanks Michaela so really um community rights are really at risk here and a healthy democratic system um and without a healthy democracy we don't have a healthy environment and we then can't be thriving as a country. Um, so really the community have consistently said no to this project and um, the department and Santos continue to railroad their rights. And this is a community that's been suffering through droughts um, and it's also huge bushfire risk in the Piliga. They need to be supported. They don't need to be railroaded by a fossil fuel resource that threatens a safe climate and also the future of the region. So really those community rights are completely at risk here. And while it's in a local area, it's also a nationally significant campaign and everyone from across Australia um, really needs to be stepping up to stand up for our rights um, and stand up for our environment. Um, if this is allowed to go ahead, it's just a com completely disrespecting um, the needs of communities and the needs of Australians as a whole um, mm. for that healthy environment. Yeah, so I mean, this, as you said, like this campaign has been going on for such a long time mm. and there have been massive surveys of what the community thinks and mm. overall it's been overwhelming that the community has said no, isn't it? It is. So 97% um, of the community have said no in um, ongoing community surveys. They've also been really, really active so um, community groups across the Northwest region have um, formed and, you know, popped up and have been fighting really hard. Um, there's been many protests out in the forest mm. and in the townships. In Sydney, the wonderful Knitting Nenners do a vigil every week outside New South Wales Parliament. This is a really widespread issue. Go you Knitting Nanas! I love that group. <laughs> I love them. They are brilliant. So keep on fighting for us. Um, and... Yeah, so there's also koalas in the Piliga. I think um, Maureen had that question before about the animals. Mm. Um, so it's the biggest mm. koala habitat um, west of the Great Dividing Range. And, and with koalas at the mm. moment, with everything that they've gone through with bushfires, this put, yeah, 
another place to actually, you know, we could stop having habitat impact seems like a no brainer to me. Yeah, exactly, Michaela. So yeah, in the recent um, black summer bushfires, we lost over 30% of koala habitat nationally. Mm. Um, You know, we really need to be protecting it. This is no time to allow that habitat to be destroyed if we want the species to continue surviving. And and Penny, what does, with your farming background, and like I have a farming background myself, you know, I come from irrigation country up in northern Victoria along the Murray River. Um, So I totally get what it's like to come from a multi-generation farming family. Like what what does that mean to that section of the community? What's at risk for them? Their whole livelihood. Mm. It's it just means if we lose this water, if we just can't survive. I mean, they we just cease to be able to function. So that whole food bowl in the northwest is under threat. And, and for what? Yeah. Great um, impact um, when coal seam gas is extracted from the water table, like through the Great Artesian Basin, um, that toxic water and salt waste is released and that can leach into um, the groundwater, into the environment and just poison it. There's been a lot of spills over the years already in the test wells um, and those areas are just now called kill zones mm. because nothing can live there. Yes, that's uh, down the creeks within the Piliga. They lead into the Nemoy River, which is part of the Murray-Darling system. So it affects a lot more than just the Pilliga. It affects that northern food bowl and right down the Murray-Darling system as well. Mm, down In towards my, of- my family is. So it's yeah. not just... It's not just the Pilliga and the locals in the Pilliga that really have a stake in this. It's probably my farming family and a lot more others as well. Yeah. The other thing I'd like to point out, Michaela, is the Artesian Basin. This is a recharge zone where the Pilliga is, the mm. eastern edges, and it covers over 20% of Australia. They rely on that water, that underground water, and that goes right through Queensland, New South Wales, down into South Australia. So again, if that water is lost or it's polluted, it affects a huge area yeah. of Australia. Yeah. yeah. And Australia's the largest, like the driest inhabited continent on earth as well. We just really can't afford to gamble with our water and it's just not worth the risk. Yeah. No. no. And so we've got the risks underneath the ground, obviously to the water. But you know, it's it's amazing to have a look. And I'm just going to sh- chuck up some images up here for people to see. But what this looks like out in in the actual forest. So I'm showing at the moment just one of the the areas that gets carved out amongst the forest. And you're like, oh yeah, that looks like there's a lot of forest around. But once you like, there's how many of these wells are they actually? looking to put in so um up to 850 wells um but that's just for the pilliga gas field so um this is actually one of seven gas fields that santos have mapped for the region so it's really like the trojan horse coming in um if they've got those approvals then they'll just spread it's like a cancer across the landscape and Mm. they just spread and spread until they've just and it will just not yeah just start yeah would it start fragmenting a lot of these forests? Yeah. Um, so, Mum, you might want to speak to fragmenting. Well, they talk about that it's mm. only going to affect a 1,000 hectares, I think, but that's not altogether. It's, it's, that is throughout the forest, chopping it up into small fragments. You're going to have roads mm. and the wells and pipes and everything. This is really devastating for the Pilica because the animals and plants need continuity to survive. Mm. Once you split them up, you get edge effects of wind, what the weather does. And also there are small animals and plants that can only migrate across very small areas. Once you chop them up, they, they can't mix with the other animals and plants. So you stop them breeding, and this leads to decline in their populations and, threaten, and threatening 
Yeah. And like that mouse that we saw earlier, the Pilliga mouse, which was so cute. I mean, that's already Mm -hmm. listed as vulnerable nationally under the EPBC Act. And so, and I was looking into it today and that mouse typically only moves, you know, 40, 50 meters at most, you know, around, like in terms of their ranges and stuff like individuals. So Mm -hmm. you've got these little animals that, you know, small impacts that might seem small to us actually makes big impacts to some species. Um, I would just yeah. want to give a bit of a shout out for people who are watching us right now. Um, we've got a couple comments coming in. David here, definitely a big shout out to the Knitting and Annas and a thumbs up. Thank you so much, David. We're big fans of them as well. Um, we've got Donna here. Oh, another Knitting Nanas. Knitting Nanas are very popular today here at the That's moment. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, we also have Lily here has already, she says done. So she's already clicked on the link below to, to try and uh, put a mission through to the to this actual review of this proposal so thank you so much lily please everyone as we're talking through this we are trying to dem- uh, get everyone to jump on board with the community here at the Pilago and actually put a submission in it's really simple to do to this process and demonstrate the community does not want this happening um and we also have Anne mcalpine in billmore near dubbo um, and she says, don't forget the endangered glossy black cockies. And that's a really good one too. They're really cool. So I'm just going to, I think this would be a great chance just to show people, like we do have a couple of Facebook events coming up around this campaign because we're in at the moment this review time where it's, I think, six weeks do we have to get our submissions in? Is that Until right? Until the 31st of July. 31st of July. So we would like to share with you a little bit more background on the Pilliga and the community that's banded together to try and save it. Um, we have a watch party of the video Pilliga Rising. This is the first time it's ever been shown uh, publicly um, out on the internet. So um, that's part, that um, event is coming up soon. But I'll just show you a little 30 second grab of what it's all about. So we'll be back in two, 30 seconds, I guess. The Pilliga has protected us since the beginning of time. If we do nothing, our water will be irreversibly poisoned. People who love the Pilliga would never, ever trade it in for money. We can always take the companies on. We've got a golden opportunity now to say no, bugger off, we don't want it. So we're back and so you can join us at that watch party to watch Pilliga Rising live. Uh, The link to our Facebook event is below. Please click on it, check it out, see what's going on and join us. Um, We do have some more questions coming in here for you, Al, in particular. Um, Any tips on how to write a good submission? Yep. Great question. Um, So the Independent Planning Commission are reviewing those submissions. What's most important is to write a unique submission. So on the the guide that we're posting in the chat about how to do it, um, we've included some tips that you can write in your submission because it's really important that they're unique and they're different from each other. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they can all just be counted as one, which is terrible. Um, So we actually need to show the widespread opposition the amount of people making a submission being huge, um, but also really responding to what the um, department have re- has released, which is called the assessment report. If you're really, really keen, you can get that report off the Independent Planning Commission website. Do warn you though, it's about 300 pages long. So I've sort of distilled a few, few points for you, um, which is on our Wilderness Society webpage. I advise you to use those. Um, you can put them in your own words as well. That would be really helpful so that your submission is as unique as possible. Um, and you're also welcome to go and do your own research too if um, you might be an academic or have some you know, expertise in a certain area. Good on you for doing that as well. Um, but it's really important that you tell the commission a little bit about yourself as well. So, um, for example, if mum was writing a submission, she would write, mm. you know, I'm Penny Reese. I'm from the Northwest region. Um, I care about this um, because of the future of farming in the um, in the community. But for you, it might be something else. It might be um, you care about climate change um, because you're a grandparent and you want to ensure that your grandkids will have a safe future 
or you're concerned because we're already seeing the impacts of climate change right here and right now. I think the recent bushfires really highlight that to all of us too. But um, please look at our submission guide, which is on our website, um, and good on you all for making a submission. Yeah, thank you so much for that, Al. Yeah, again, links will be down below. And if you have any questions that you would like us to answer right now, or if you're watching this a little bit after the live, we will be still in the comments. Al will be there answering any questions that you might have. So please don't be shy in asking us. Um, so I just wanted to share with you um, guys that I've got a photo here that you supplied me, Al, of yourself out in the Pilaga. And this is really what we're looking to, to save here, like this beautiful forest. Um, and Al, I believe this is actually the largest inland forest in Australia. It is mm. actually, um, yeah, the largest inland forest. Um, so I just don't know why we're going to be chopping it up um, for fossil fuels. Um, we've already, um, you know, Australia has one of the highest um, rates of deforestation in the world. I think we might be the fourth highest in the world for deforestation. Um, and it's just completely unacceptable. You know, once these forests are gone, they're gone forever and they take so like especially hollows um in trees so animals need these tree hollows um for their habitat in a lot of these trees they take over 100 to 150 years to develop um so once they're knocked down the animals then have nowhere to breed um or to nest yeah um so yeah it's a really big concern. Mm. Yeah, I mean, mm. we also want to share a couple of comments coming through here. Al, we've got Brian Leslie Maguire who says, Hi all, love your work, thank you. So thank you so much for joining us, Brian. We really appreciate your support as well. We also have uh, Don O'Carey watching from the central coast of New South Wales. Uh, hashtag no CSG. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so basically... Penny and Al, what is the next steps for us right now? I'd say getting those submissions in, really, isn't it? Um, I'm just so disappointed with with the government, the New South Wales government, and I think we really have to show that that we object. We're not giving up. That is really, really important. Um, it's just... It's just criminal. It's mm. really it's criminal. I mean, we, we have so much sunshine. We have so many renewable energy sources. And this is just totally unnecessary. It's, it's just, it seems almost like it's, it's for mates mm. that it's all happening instead of for the greater good of our community. I think you've said that beautifully, Mum. And also so this um, independent planning process can really stop the gas field going ahead because last year the Bailong Valley coal mine went through the same process and it was denied approvals um, based on the quality of submissions um, and also from hearing from everyone at the public hearings. So this really can stop the gas field and, and we really we really have to. Um, on Mum's point of it being really unnecessary as well, um, the Port Kembla gas import terminal recently got approved um, to double its capacity um, and so with that, we actually just don't need gas from from Narrabri. It's completely unnecessary and it's not going to bring down gas prices. And really, the way for economic recovery going forwards is going to be manufacturing um, in the renewable sector and that will bring jobs and growth to regional communities. Yeah. Well, mm. I mean, I think that really sums it up for all of us. And I, I think the action is clear. Everybody, let's in the next six weeks come together. Let's do it again as we've done year after year after year in this campaign. Um, and so I would like to thank you, Al. Thank you, Penny, for joining me today. Um, yes, it's been brilliant to talk to you. Thank you. Um, so everyone, please, in the comments below, find the submissions, go off and, and make yours. I'll be making mine. And uh, also look to join us for the Pilliga Rising movie event that is coming up soon. And in in, I think it's the 8th of July. Check the link out below as well. It will have some really great uh, interactions there. I think it's not just going to be showing the movie, but it'll be also having a chat with Al and maybe other community members as well. So you'll be able to get all your questions answered at that as well. Um, that's it from us. Uh, we hope to see you next time. Thanks, Al. Thanks, Penny.
Thanks, Michaela, and Bye, thanks Michaela. everyone for joining us. And please keep fighting. Okay. We can do this together. Bye. Yes. Bye. Bye.